The following is a presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. While you and I were enjoying the Red Sox pounding the daylights out of the New York Yankees, well, most of us were, the Montreal Expos and Philadelphia Phillies opened up an important three-game set at the Vet. The Phillies in first place in the National League East and Montreal trying to hang on in the chase. And the chase went to Montreal Monday night. Tony Perez, a solo shot to deep center field to make a 1-0 in the fourth. Andre Dawson, a fielder's choice to make it 2-0, and that's all the Expos would need. They go to 37-35, and Philadelphia goes to 40-26, and but the big story was Steve Rogers. Nine innings of one-hit baseball, he walked two and struck out four. Rogers goes to 11-7, and the Expos are within six of the Phillies. On a Tuesday, they'll play next on Retro Sports Network. As Retro Sports Network presents Major League Baseball Replay 1978. Today, Tuesday, what's the date? Uh, the 27th of June. From Olympic Stadium in Montreal, bonjour, it's the Expos and the Phillies. Brought to you by... DigitalDice.com, the best podcast on the web for your sports simulations and replay needs. Find us today on Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, and wherever else fine podcasts are listed. It's Dick Ruthven, fresh over from the Atlanta Braves for the Phillies. And how do's for the Expos. And a good afternoon to wherever you might be. My name is Ron Juckett. This was supposed to be done last night, but any time that Dave Gardner's support chat is on, that is the most important thing. You can go to find him on YouTube, at Dave Gardner, and join us for that throughout the duration of our situation. The situation today is the Expos are playing Game 73 and have refound some magic. Steve Rogers is a sit in the open, a one-hitter to hold the Phillies to no runs in a 2-0 win. Today, Dick Ruthven makes his first or second start with the Phillies against Hal Dews, who's looking for his fourth win. So that's a big one. Pittsburgh could not take advantage Monday night to get back into a tie with Philadelphia. And the Expos, if they can take a couple here against the Phillies, can really make this a three-team race. If not, it's going to be Pittsburgh who continues to slump in the Phillies. Remember, at one point, the Pirates had a nine-and-a-half game lead over Philadelphia. So, Mr. Schmidt's back in the lineup. Mr. Carter's in the lineup for the Expos. Let's get to it. Let's play some baseball on a Tuesday afternoon, shall we? And as Hal Dews takes his warm-up pitches, we can tell you that he is making his sixth start of the year, his 14th appearance overall. He is 3-4 and four with an ERA of 286. He's a fastball pitcher and a ground ball pitcher at 87. He has yet to face the Phillies this year. His last appearance, Robbie, was a start against the Mets on June 22nd. He went six innings, eight hits, four runs, three earned, and a loss to the Mets. He walked four and struck out one. And so in 44 innings, he's allowed 48 hits, 18 runs, 14 earned. He's walked 25, controls an issue. As I said, Mark, the Dave Gardner support chat's more important. And so you're getting this game right now instead. He walked 25 and struck out 12. That's not very good control. And as I said, he's three and four. So the lineup, good morning, Lorenzo. How are you? The lineup for Philadelphia, Bake McBride in right field will lead it off. Larry Boa will bat second at short. Mike Schmidt at third will bat third. Greg Luzinski will clean up in left field. Richie Hebner at first will bat fifth. Elliot Maddox, I'm sorry, Greg Maddox is in center. He'll bat sixth. Bob Boone behind the plate will bat seventh. Teddy Sizemore hits eighth at second. And Dick Ruthven, freshly over from the Atlanta Braves, is on the mound, batting ninth. Defensively, 
for the Expos. Cromartie is an 8 and a 5 in left. Andre Dawson, an 8 and a 6 in center. Ellis Valentine is a 10 in right field. Larry Parrish, a 5 at third as we move on to the infield. Chris Spire back in the lineup for the Expo as he's a 6. Dave Cash is a 7 at second. And Tony Perez is a 7 at first. Gary Carter is an 8 and a 7 behind the plate. And Hal Dews is a 7 on the mound, but not really that great of a fielder at 9-13. Yep, Dave was pretty upset last night. And we also had 30 people watching live. And so we can play baseball pretty much at any point. So it was more important to be with Dave last night. McBride at 245, four homers and 20 RBI. And so we'll have day baseball for you now through Friday. Saturday being the off day, at least for the 78 replay. So you get four games this, games this week and a Sunday game. And then I don't have that every other Monday appointment next week. So... We'll get back to it. The All-Star game is coming up in about two weeks. Dues is set. Pitch to McBride is a ground ball to Parrish. Over to Perez. One away. So that's one out for Boa. Larry is having a great year. A 330. 12 doubles and 23 RBI. Dues, you can figure maybe seven innings. Adobe. Acrobat? Yeah, he's in a better mood today. He was giving me crap. Pitch from Dews is a bunt. Carter picks it up. Cash will cover. And Boa is retired. Two out. For Mike Schmidt. At 257 home runs and 39 RBI. You gotta wonder. Since the computer will pick those all-star teams. Whether Schmidt will make it or not, you certainly would make it the, any year the rest of his career, maybe with the exception of 87 or 8. But he's not having an all-star year as far as the computer is concerned. Pitch from Dews is a line drive pass to hit the glove of Parrish. It bounces in the outfield, and Schmidt is on first with an error. Adobe. Yep, that probably is it. They're buying again, so... Audition is their audio software. Photoshop is their big seller. And, of course, they are the creator of the interchangeable PDF. Frank Luzinski is at 255, 17 homers, and 52 RBI. Runner on first, two out. Pitch from Dews is a liner in the left field. Through the hole. Schmidt will go to third. Cromartie picks it up. And there's runners in the corners for Richie Hebner. And still two out. Hebner at 264. Seven homers and 28 RBI. So two out. Dues from the stretch. That's to Cash. He'll throw to first. And Perez is on the bang. The side is retired. The air does not hurt. Neither does the hit. The Phillies strand two. The Expos coming up. Half an inning in the books. Nothing, nothing. And so, as Dick Ruthven, who came over 12 days ago for Gene Garber, he is 1-0. and all. This is his third start. He has an ERA of 077. With the Phillies, he must have gotten hurt on his second start. He shut the Padres down on the 18th. And against the Cubs, he was done in two and two-thirds innings with two hits. A walk and a strikeout. So he must have come out hurt. So overall with the Phils, 11 and two-thirds innings, nine hits, two runs, one earned. He has not allowed a homer. He has walked two, struck out seven. And he is a fastball pitcher, a fly ball pitcher. That throws it at about 85. And he could go the distance. The lineup he'll face. Dave Cash will bat second and lead off. Chris Spire in the two hole will play short. Warren Cromartie in left will bat third. Tony Perez cleans up at first. Ellis Valentine will play right and go fifth. Andre Dawson bats sixth and center. Gary Carter catching at seventh. 
Larry Parrish at third will bat eighth, and Hal Dews, who threw 18 pitches in his half of the first, will go ninth. Defensively for the Phillies, Luzinski is a four and four in set left. Gary Maddox a ten and six in center. Bake McBride a nine and eight in the right. The infield, Mike Schmidt a perfect ten at third. Larry Boa a perfect ten at short. Teddy Sizemore a seven at second. Richie Hebner a six at first. Bob Boone a ten and a five. That's a Woolworth player behind the plate. And Dick Ruthven is a seven on the mound with a nine six six fielding percentage. And if you wonder what the big difference is between the Phillies and the Pirates, Schmidt, Boa, Sizemore, and Hebner. That infield defense screams gold glove. And when you add Maddox's 10 in center field, you just never know. Kenny Castro says, let's go, Phils. He's getting glared at in French. Cash at 270, five homers and 28 RBI. Pitch from Ruthven is a line drive left field in the hole, and that's a hit. Brings up Chris Spire at 268. Two homers and 19 RBI. Of course, whether or not a factor here in Montreal, we're pretending the roof is on. Pitch to Chris is a fly ball right field. McBride will make the grab. Cash retreats back to first. For the first out, here's Cromartie, the only lefty in the lineup against Ruthven. 294, three homers, and 22 RBI. Doing well today. Actually, had a doctor's appointment, Robbie. Had to get my prescriptions refilled, and so I did a telehealth visit, which I guess my insurance will pay for. And it went really well. You used Zoom for the first time. She had some trouble trying to connect, but we did it. I gave you Cromartie's numbers, right? 294, three homers, and 22 RBI. Yep, Mr. Mike, home of the 1982 World Champion Montreal Expos. And before you send your cards and letters going to never win the World Series, you're an idiot, Ron. We did 82 last year, and they beat the Orioles in six. Pitch to Cromartie is a base hit up the middle. Cash will hold at second, and the Expos are flying from last night. If you missed the open... Steve Rogers threw a one-hit shutout. They beat the Phillies 2-0 in the series opener. Tony Perez at 292. Six homers and 39 RBI. Kenny's got one today. Yeah, that's pretty much why, Lorenzo. She's my, I have a wonderful GP. My wife and I share the same doctor. And we chatted for about a half hour, and that was very nice. I'm sure the insurance bill for that will be through the roof. But got my prescriptions renewed, and hopefully they can refill my metformin while they still have it in stock at CVS. And so you can get that taken care of through the summer. And indeed, a good doctor is a great thing to have. She's my age. And she'll be uh, 49 sometime this year. Pitch to Perez, strike three. Ruth Van got him on a one-two cutter on the outside corner. Two out for Ellis Valentine at 224, 13 homers and 37 RBI. It's funny because my wife and I must have gotten her right out of her residency because she's been our doctor for 17, 18 years. She's just wonderful. Even better than a good mechanic. Yep. Pitch to Valentine. Strike three. Ruthven got out of it. He swung on and missed. A 2-2 cutter at 84 to retire the side. The Expos strand two. No runs, two hits, no errors. After one. Huh? Or, I forget what zero is in French. I won't even go there. No score. Maddox, Boone, and Sizemore. Here on the top of the second to face dues. Gary at 276. Two R's, by the way, just like Gary Moore. Four homers and 25 RBI. Dew starts the second with a ground ball base hit left side. Lance Pan or Larry Parrish made the late dive and it got past him. So Maddox will hold it first for Bob Boone. 
251, four homers, and 22 RBI. So, baseball Tuesday through Friday at noon. No game Saturday. My mother's coming to drop off some food. Yes, Soviet U Russia gives good health care. No polonium tea for Lorenzo this week. And then we'll go back on Sunday and do some, some more baseball. And if you're missing baseball in a day, I don't do one. There's always lots to watch on YouTube. Pitch to Boone. Up the middle. Deuce cuts it off. Throws to first. For one out. So Maddox will go to second. Avantage. Nadal. Sizemore at 242. No homers and four RBI. Lorenzo playing a Russia Cup game as he speaks. And the French has been postponed this year. I know what you meant. You a big tennis fan? Zero calls. His doctor in the gulag prescribed 10 hours of rock breaking. Then I got to call him in the morning. Well, may I suggest you, you break some ZZ Top Rock then? She's got legs and she knows how to use them. Can I give you Sizemore's numbers? 242, no homers and four RBI. Runner on second, one out. That's Maddox. Sizemore, ground ball to Spire. Looks Maddox back to the bag over to Perez for the out. So two out for Ruthven, who is one for five since coming over from the Braves. 283, what a hitter. With two triples and four RBI in real life. So this is not a gimme for dues. Pitch to Ruthven is a ground ball to Spire. He throws it to first, and that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, no errors. The Phillies strand another. Inning and a half down. No score. Oh, you're back to a pink slip if you lose, huh? So as Andre Dawson stands in the box, we can tell you the standings. The Dodgers have won five straight and leave Houston by four and a half. The Reds have lost five straight, and they've lost the script. 39 and 33 isn't so bad. Do you look at the Dodgers, and they have the best record in baseball. San Diego's won five straight. They're at 36 and 36. Philly's only played 66 games. And the Expos, this game 73 for them. They're six back. The Pirates are at 40 and 28. In the American League, the Angels have lost nine straight along with Oakland. So they're three back of Kansas City who've won five straight. Minnesota and Texas four back. The Shy Sox are five and a half. And in the East, the Yankees are two up on the Orioles. And with the Red Sox beating the Yankees yesterday, they are five and a half back. And the guy with the last name of Beard is the only one not to have one in ZZ Top. I did not know that, Mark. I learned something new today. Andre Dawson at 268, 14 homers and 40 RBI. To start the bottom of the second. They play for a bunt. Dawson swings into left center field. That's a base hit. Maddox will cut it off, and Dawson's got a single. Brings up Gary Carter. 261. Nine homers and 36 RBI. How you doing? And again, yes. Something you will... AER 1946-66. Or 66. Is that your birthday? June 6, 46. Another tidbit you'd never hear on a Fortnite stream. Runner goes. Boone will throw down to Sizemore. And Dawson has it stolen. So that's his 13th of the year. And so runner on second. Yeah, you can run the U.S. national team. If Jurgen Klinsmann could ruin our soccer team, you could do a good job. I gave you Carter's numbers already. Nobody out. Pitch to Gary is up the middle, and Maddox will snag it on a line drive. One out for Larry Parrish at 262. 
five homers and 22 RBIs. They'd have those splotchy ones. Tribe asked, Tribe fan asked if people would have beards. Oh, okay. 1960. No, it's nice to meet you, Andrew. Uh, it depends. If you're a college kid that plays Fortnite, you can pretend to grow a beard. That's splotchy stuff. It looks like peat moss on your face. That's how my first beard looked anyway. If you can't poke fun at yourself, who, who can you poke at? Pitch to Parrish is a base hit up the middle. Dawson rounds third. He'll score without a throw. And the Expos guff up, go out one nothing. Lorenzo will tough it out in the frozen tundras of Lambo, I mean Eastern Russia. Tribe fan has the Jonathan Taze beard going. Hal Dew is at 154 with two RBI. They play for a bun. He's going to swing. They and Dew strikes out, so he doesn't ground into a double play. 0 2 fastball just caught the outside corner. Two out for Cash, who singled his first time up. Dick Ruthven threw nine batters, 28 pitches, an inning and two thirds, a run, four hits. It's earned, and he has struck out thir three. And Lorenzo would kill for a Lambeau Field weather day. They also heat the, tr the grass there. Vince Lombardi put that in. Did you know that? Pitch to Cash is a ground ball to Sizemore over to first for the out, and the Expos are down. Not before they get a run on two hits and no errors. They leave another runner on after two. It's Montreal one, Philadelphia nothing. Vince Lombardi in the mid-60s put the coil heating system in the Lambeau field so the field would not freeze and so grass could kind of grow whenever. However, it didn't it got so cold for the ice bowl that as soon as a tarpaulin came off, this is something you'll never hear in a Fortnite stream. McBride, Boa, and Schmidt, by the way, here in the top of the third. When they took the tarpaulin off the morning of the ice bowl it immediately froze the field because it was so cold. And because it wasn't frozen solid to begin with, it made the footing a lot more treacherous because it was wet because of the condensation of water freezing from the grass. So Haldu says, are you done with that story? I want to pitch. Nine batters, 33 pitches, two innings, two hits. McBride is 0 for 1. Pitch to Bake is a ground ball to Parrish. Over to first. Better hurry. And he's out. So one out for Boa, who's 0 for 1. Soft American capitalists. That's Lorenzo's word. Come here and see what an ice bowl really is. I'm told that it's whatever's in Dave Gardner's scorpion bowl. That's an ice bowl. Perez and Parrish play for the bunt. Boa does bunt. P Perez picks it up, swings it over to Dews, covering for the out. So two out for Schmidt, who's 0 for 1. Dews from the wind, and there's a fly ball to left, but Cromartie's there. And that will retire the side. So Dews is doing what Rodgers did yesterday. No runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom of the third, one nothing Expos. Spire, Cromarty, and Perez. You face Ruthven here in the bottom of the third. Pitch from Spire is a line drive to Hebner. One out. Good snag by Richie. Brings up Cromarty, who singled his first time up. One nothing Montreal. They have four hits. The Phillies have two. And I don't know what we just saw. Oh. So let me let me say this. There's a ground ball past Hebner. McBride goes in the corner. Cromartie's digging for second. Hebner will pick it up. He throws and they got him. So Cromartie tried to sink, stretch a single into a double. And they threw him out. 
That really was McBride with a throw. You know what? It rolled down, went past the bag, and got caught on the bullpen out there. The dirt where the catchers sit, and it slowed it down enough that McBride just flung it into Sizemore. So you can use your own imagination how the out went. But it's a single, and then Cromartie is thrown out trying to get there. Here's Perez. He struck out his first time up. Uh, his guard lady, Titania, made the, made the quip. Soft American capitalist. I'm not touching that one with a 50-foot pole there, Lorenzo. Am I frozen? Shouldn't be. Pitch to Perez is a line drive to Sizemore, and that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, the base running blunder after three. Montreal one, Philadelphia nothing. Michigan man, one year a bowl game was played on a field that could be heated, but somehow the heater got turned on and burnt the grass, so the field was black with white lines. Wonder where that was, do you remember? It'll be Luzinski, Hebner, and Maddox. Luzinski singled his first time up. One of the two hits for the Phils. Ball four. Man, Luzinski's on with a walk. The first given up by dues. Olympic Stadium is a pitcher's ballpark. Lefties minus two in the hitting category. Righties minus eight. Home runs minus 25 for lefty. Minus 31 for righties. So you really got to poke one out of here to make some hay in Montreal. But we play on Mother Monsanto, and the ball really does roll on the turf. Hebner's 0 for 1. Pitch to Ritchie. is a liner in the right field. Valentine will grab it on a hop, and Luzinski motors to third. Russia Cup update. <laughs> After 39 minutes of his game between two teams, we do not know who are playing. It's nil-nil. So here's Maddox. Gary singled his first time up. He's one for one. Game was on NBC. That's all you can remember. Do you remember what year? They try not to play bowl games on the heated and cold weather. Pitch to Maddox is a liner up the middle. Dawson will dive. And makes the catch. Luzinski goes back to tag. Dawson throws it home to Carter, and they don't get the ball. So the Phillies have tied the game. Dawson, you weren't sure if he was going to get anything there. The throw went up the line. He made the catch to save a run, and then thought he had a shot at Luzinski. Okay, I wonder if that was in Phoenix. So Bob Boone is 0 for 1. You certainly wouldn't need to do that at the Rose Bowl or in Miami for the Orange Bowl. Boone is 0 for 1. Yeah, I saw I didn't realize that until yesterday afternoon that he had the same um, blunder. Anyway, Boone's 0 for 1. 1 out, 1-1, one, one, top the 4th. Phillies and Expos from Montreal. Fly ball to left. Cromartie goes back. He'll flag it down. Hebner goes to third to throw into Parrish. Not in time. Okay, there wasn't a throw, according to the play-by-play. -play. I guess. Here's Sizemore. Ted is 0 for 1. A run on three hits for the Phils. A run on five hits and an error for the Expos. Pitch to Sizemore, ground ball to Spire, by the bag at second, over to first, and the side is retired. The Phillies get a run on a hit, no air, as they strand a runner after three and a half. Phillies one, Expos one. So Valentine, Dawson, and Carter to face Ruthven here in the bottom of the fourth. Valentine has struck out his first time up, he's 0 for 1. Ruthven delivers, and there's a fly ball left center field. Maddox, one away. Dawson, singled, stole second, and scored on the Parrish base hit. And that was in the second. Pitch to Dawson is a ground ball to Sizemore. Moves to his right, throws to first for the out. Well, his left, our right. I get this direction thing so messed up. Gary Carter is 0 for 1. 
I like football at Yankee Stadium. Some of the biggest college football games in history were played at Yankee Stadium. Pitch to Carter is a line drive right center field. Gary will hold it first. Maddox will pick it up and throw it back in. In fact, maybe up until the 80s, the biggest professional football game was played at Yankee Stadium. Larry Parrish singled and drove in his 23rd run. Two out, bottom of the fourth, 1-1 one, one the score. Pitch from Ruthven is a line drive to Sizemore, and that will retire the side. Expos strand a runner. Everybody's left on four after four. It's the Expos one, the Phillies one. So it'll be Ruthven, McBride, and Boa to face dues here in the fifth. Mr. Ruthven is 0 for 1. And there's a long drive to left. That's going to get down the corner. Ruthven's going for three, and he's in there. Duke got their first bull win in 60 years at Yankee Stadium. Yes, they did. So a leadoff triple for the pitcher. And Dews just kind of stands there on the mound laughing a bit. Through 18 batters, 71 pitches. Four innings, four hits. The one earned run. He has walked one. McBride is 0 for 2. Ball four. So runners in the corners now for Boa, who is 0 for 2. Duke, not a football powerhouse. Boa drags a bunt. Carter throws it to Cash, covering, and what happened? Boa is retired, so it's a sacrifice, not a squeeze. Ruthven will hold it third. McBride on second. And now they need to pick their poison. Do they pitch to Schmidt with one out? Or do they go to Luzinski with one out and hope for a double play? They're going to pitch to Schmidt. And they're going to play halfway. Yep, Yankee Stadium was used for football for years. That's where the Giants played from 56 to 73. Jets actually played a preseason game at Yankee Stadium when it was after the, it was remodeled. And Notre Dame has played there a couple times in the new ballpark, along with the Pinstripe Bowl, which is owned by ESPN. Schmidt is 0 for 2, infield halfway. Ground ball to Parrish. They'll throw home. They'll throw to Carter, and they don't get Ruthven. So they tried it. They went against the odds, and Ruthven will score. So it's 2-1 to one Phillies, one out, top the fifth. So they don't get anybody. Here's Luzinski. He is singled, walked, and scored. And this time he pops it up. Carter behind the plate, takes off the mask. On the running track, two out. For Richie Hebner, who is one for two. He's got himself a single. Four hits for the Phillies, six for Montreal. Got him. He got him a 1-2 fastball on the outside corner, and that will retire the side. One run on one hit, no errors. We go to the bottom of the fifth. You get the commercial. 2-1, to one, Philadelphia. You can play the game of what am I drinking today. And here's a recap for those of you who might have joined us late. Larry Parrish singled home Andre Dawson in the second to make a one nothing Montreal. And then the Phillies got singletons in the fourth and the fifth. Gary Maddox with a liner to make it 1-1. And Mike Schmidt hit into a, hit into a fielder's choice in the fifth. 
to make it 2-1 Philadelphia as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Alienware ad from Robbie. You're not going to guess, Lorenzo. It's one of your favorite drinks. Hal Dews is 0-1 for 1 with the strikeout. Pitch from Ruthven is strike three. So Dews goes down again. Lorenzo, your clue should have been I played an ad. <laughs> That's a good time for me to take a drink. Cash is one for two. He's got himself a single. Ruthven threw 18 batters, 52 pitches, four and a third innings. Six hits, one run it was earned, and he has struck out four. Fly ball, left field. Luzinski has it, two out. Chris Spire is 0 for 2. Ruthven from the wind, and there's a ground ball to Sizemore over to first, and that will retire the side. So the Expos go down in order. We played five. It's the Phillies two, the Expos one. So Maddox, Boone, and Sizemore as Dune Dues gives me the fatigue warning. 93 pitches in. Maddox is, 0 for, is 1 for 1. He is singled with an RBI. He's distracted. He's tapping out SOS and Morris. 57th minute, and he's losing one nothing. I can see my armed escorts waiting in the wings should I lose. Well, you know, the embassy's right around the corner if you want to come back home. I played the ad. That's your warning. Pitch to Maddox is a ground ball up the middle. Spire by the back at second. Over to first for the out. Bob Boone is 0 for 2. Dues delivers, and there's a fly ball right center field. Andre Dawson is there, two out. Brings up Teddy Sizemore, who's 0 for 2. Dues might be able to pitch into the eighth. He's playing hockey, soccer. Russian Premier League. Russia Cup, as a matter of fact. Pitch to Sizemore is a ground ball base hit right side. So Teddy has the fifth hit for the Phillies. And Ruthven, who tripled his first time up, or his last time up, is one for two. Pitch or throw to first. Sizemore is, is back. So, Dews now to face Ruthven. From the stretch, there's a ground ball up the middle. Spire will flip it to Cash at the bag, and that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, no errors. They don't strand anybody after five and a half. It's two to one, Phillies. So Cromarty, Perez, and Valentine to face Ruthven here in the bottom of the sixth. Cromarty is singled and doubled. He's got the easy part of the cycle. Pitch to Warren, ball four. So Cromarty, 3-2 up high. Well, that would not help you playing soccer. Treacheriac was great at many things. I don't think soccer was one of them. Tony Perez struck out. He's 0 for 2. Pitch from Ruthven. Here's a line drive right center field. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. Cromartie will round third and hold. And Perez is on with a double. And Montreal has two on and nobody out for Valentine, who is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. So Cromartie the tying run. And Perez the go-ahead run. Pitch to Boone and Ruthven will chat. Ruthven now from the stretch. Valentine struck him out. They changed the signs around, and Valentine swung on and missed a 1 2 fastball. He had a loaded red hockey stick in the Red Army. Oh, I think Tretriak played straight up. The Soviets were that good. Here's Dawson. He's 1 for 2. Stole a base and scored in the second. Pitch to Andre. Struck him out. He got him to swing and miss on an 84-mile-an-hour fastball. So two out. And from the Russia Cup. We 
We're told that the two undisclosed teams are tied at one. So Carter chuckles at the plate. He's one for two. He'd like to bring home Cromartie and Perez. Pitch from Ruth Van Carter. Ground ball up the middle. Bo is going to have to hurry in front of the bag. On the turf. Throws to first. Carter's out. So the Expos put two on in scoring position and nobody out. And everybody stays put. We go to the seventh. No runs. A hit. The Expos strand two. It's Philadelphia two. Montreal one. Sounds like a Janis Joplin song, Lorenzo. Me and a monkey named Ivan. Hey, hey, hey. So McBride steps to the plate. 106 pitches for dues through 27 batters in six innings. Five hits. This will be his last inning. No homers, two runs both there. And he's walked two and struck out one. Pitch to McBride. There's a liner in the left field that Cromartie misplays. McBride's going for two, and he's got it. And so that's not even a hit, is there? It is a hit. So it's a single and an E7. And the Phillies have an insurance runner on and nobody out for Boa, who's 0 for 2. Yes, just like my wife, your misery provides me with entertainment, Lorenzo. Meanwhile, the game is tied. 2-1 Phillies here. Carter and Dews will change things up. Dews from the stretch, and there's a ground ball to Parrish. Looks McBride back over to first. And Boa is retired one away. Good morning, good afternoon, Mr. Captain Carl. Oh, I hate penalty kicks. PKs, ugh. How you doing, Bobby? Here's Schmidt. Mike is 0 for 3. Luzinski on deck. Pitch from Dews. Struck him out! He got him on a 2-2 fastball. And I'm fine with ties. I own a few, as a matter of fact. Here's Luzinski, who's one for two, with a run scored and a walk. And so this crowd of about 25,000 is up on their feet. As Dews has held the Phillies to six hits through six and two-thirds. And two runs. It hit him. Dews just pops the ball back into his glove. And now they're yelling at each other. Luzinski got hit in the leg. He goes out and says something to Dews. Carter's going, dude, why would we throw at you with two out? Why would we do that? And so Luzinski and Dews exchange a few words. I believe Tet de Merit was used. You are in Montreal. And so Carter just kind of escorts Luzinski down to first, and the benches kind of stay at the top step. Doing fine. McBride on second. Luzinski, who does look like a bull in a china shop, on first. Hebner one for three with a strikeout. It was a single, and that's ball four. And there's two out. Luzinski chews it dues all the way down the line. Going to second. And dues is toast. And Mike Garman will come in now. Uh, I want to do a double switch, do I? No, I don't. So they're loaded. McBride, we'll tell you about him in a minute. This is the ninth appearance for Garman with the Expos. He's 0-1 with four saves. And an ERA of 245. He's not faced the Phillies since his trade from the Dodgers. Two innings on the 24th against the Cardinals. He went and allowed a hit, walked three, and struck out one in a save. I knew you or you were yelling at. I'm not playing a Dodger game. 11 innings, 12 hits, a home run, three runs in total. He has walked six and struck out four. He's a fly ball pitcher, and his fastball tops out about 87. And with them loaded and two out, you'll face Gary Maddox. 
who has singled and scored. Yeah, a former Red Sox and Cardinal pitcher. And now the creator of the GPS. No, not really. Pitch to Maddox. is a base hit right center field. McBride will score. Luzinski scores. Hebner goes to third, and it's 4-1 to one, Philadelphia. So the Phillies making hay after yesterday. Throw to first. Maddox is back. Boone is 0 for 3. Garman delivers. Runners go. Throw to second. And that is an out. They got Gary Maddox trying to steal second. I took a quieter drink that time. I didn't want to break anyone's eardrums. So, a runner tried to go, and he was thrown out trying to steal. Carter just whipped the ball down there, and it was an easy play. So, the Phillies, however, got two more runs to make it 4-1. to one. Larry Parrish will lead off. He is singled and driven in the lone Expos run uh, Make in the second. As Yoda says, do or do not. No, there is no try. Pitch to Parrish is a line drive to Sizemore, and he leaps and makes the catch. So they let Garmin hit here. He went 0 for 5 with 4 strikeouts. So he can pitch the 8th and kind of give the Expos pen a little more breathing room. You got Daryl Knowles who can go... Am I done? What do you mean am I done? I just flipped myself over. 325 a pound. This turkey should be done by the 4th of July. Pitch to Garmin. Is strike three. 0-2 curve. And I'll bring him cash. Who's one for three. Ruth been through 27 batters. 89 pitches. Six and two-thirds innings. He walked one and struck out seven. I take it that Lorenzo lost. He's in agony here, huh? I took the sip and swallowed it away from the microphone. Pitch to Cash, who's one for three with the single right back to Ruthven over to first, and Cash is retired. And that will retire the side. So after seven, Philadelphia four, Montreal one. Yell at the announcer because you're losing. There you go. It's somehow it's my fault that you're losing. Bob Boone will, will bat Sizemore and Ruthven to follow. Boone is 0 for 3. I told you to play the 4 2 1 2 1. But did you listen? No. Pitch to Boone is a ground ball base hit up the middle. So Boone has a single. Eighth hit for Philadelphia, seven for the Expos. Four runs. No errors. They left seven on. Had the Phillies. The Expos have a run on two errors. And six stranded. Sizemore's one for three. That Russian Rockets waiting for you. Pitch to Sizemore. Struck him out. So Garmin got him on a one-two away. Yes, if you're going to blame me for you losing, then I can certainly take pot shots. Ruthven is one for three with a triple. And a run scored. One out. Expos play back. Pitch to Ruthven. And that got away from Carter. And Boone will move up 90 on the wild pitch. So 3-1 and one the count. Extra time starting. Well, there you go. You haven't lost yet. Jeez. Pitch to Ruthven. There's a ground ball right back to Cash up the middle. Has to hurry over to first. And that is two out. So they'll bring up McBride, who's one for three with a walk and a run scored. Absolutely. I wonder if that was even possible. 
Just think, Mr. Forsberg said, if I had money and cash as a double play combo. You'd have the old Yogi Berra line. You've got cash, which is just as good as money. McBride, single, walk and a run scored. Pitch to from Garmin, ground ball to third. Parrish will hold on to it. He'll have to eat it as it just kind of was spun around. It's not an air, but it took a little bit of a funny hop when it hit off the turf, and it's 5-1 to one Philadelphia. So that was rather strange. It'll bring up Boa. As you hear the car alarm behind me, can't do anything about that. Boa's 0 for 3. Pitch from Garmin. There's a ground ball right back to Mike over to first, and that will retire the side. But the Phils get a run on two hits and a car alarm. After 7.5, it's 5 to 1, Philadelphia. So Spire, Cromartie, and Perez. Spire 0 for 3. Someone shut off the car alarm. Please give that person applause as Ruthven starts the bottom of the seventh on 94 pitches. Spire. Ground ball to Hebner. That was a humdinger, and Richie just walked, strolls to the bag for the out. One away. For Cromarty, he has two of the seven hits. Double and a walk. The other hit, of course, would be a single. Pitch from Ruthven is a line drive right field. McBride will try to throw him out, and Cromartie's in there with a double. So that was a clean single, and Cromartie, just with that extra burst of speed, took advantage of McBride's arm, which is still pretty good. So one out for Perez, who is a double and a strikeout. He's one for three. Expos down by four, five to one, bottom of the eighth. Ball four. Yes. Would the person with the red Chevrolet report to the parking lot? Would the person with the red Chevy report to the parking lot? Your car alarm is going off. Attention, Kmart shoppers. Here's Valentine. He's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. So Cromarty on second, Perez on first. Expos threatening here in the bottom of the eighth, but they trail 5 to 1. Ruthven's pitch and Valentine in the left or right center field. Maddox will flag it down. Cromartie tags. He goes to third. Two out. Runners in the corners for Andre Dawson. Who was one for three. He has singled, stole a base, scored, and struck out. Two out pitch. Struck him out. Ruthven got out of it. 1-2, right down St. Catherine Street. No runs, no hit, or one hit, no errors. And the Spo Strand 2. We go to the ninth. Philadelphia 5, Montreal 1. So Garmin to face Schmidt, Luzinski, and Hebner. Schmidt is 0 for 4. He reached on a, or drove in a run and struck out. Pitch from Garmin, ball 4. Daryl Knowles warming for the Expos. Here's Luzinski. Luzinski got hit by a pitch his last time up. And nearly started a fight. Anywho, he's one for two. He's walked and scored twice. Garter reminds Garmin not to hit Luzinski. And popped up behind the plate. Carter dons the mask and, or doffs the mask, and makes the catch one out. For Hebner, one for three, has also struck out and walked. Schmidt on first, 5-1, Philadelphia. Carter Parrish in a pinch hitter for Montreal in their half of the night. Up the middle, base hit. Spire got a late jump. And with Maddox... at the plate... Montreal will go with Bill Atkinson. Atkinson making his 23rd appearance of the year. He is 1-0 with one save, an ERA of 440. He has faced the Phillies twice. He's gone an inning, allowed a hit. He has walked two and struck out one. 
He last pitched on the 25th, so two days ago. That would be Sunday against the Cardinals. He went an inning, allowed a hit, and struck a batter out. So overall, 30 and two-thirds innings, 28 hits, one homer, 16 runs in total, 15 earned. He walked 17 and struck out 17. Standard pitcher doesn't go either way with a ground ball or the fly ball, and he throws it hard at fastball at 95. Gary Maddox has driven in three today. He is single twice, and now has driven in 28 on the year. Atkinson's pitch is a line drive center field. Base hit. Maddox is going for two. Schmidt will score, and it's 6-1, to one, Phils. So the Phillies are making up for the fact that Steve Rogers won't hit him yesterday. And then I'll bring up Bob Boone, who's won for four. He has singled and scored. So Maddox has driven in four. And dollars to Kenny Castro's Krispy Kremes. He's going to be our digital dice to dice MVP. Pitch to Boone with runners on second. And third is a fly ball to Cromarty and left. Hebner goes back and tags. And when you're down by five, what does six matter? And so he'll score without a throw. Brings up Sizemore, one for four. He is singled and struck out. Pitch to Ted, fly ball, center field. Dawson's there, and he'll make the catch. See, aren't you glad we waited an extra 12 hours to play this game? Two runs, two hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The Expos need six to get Negro and seven to win the ball game. Gary Carter is one for three. Parrish in the pitcher spot to face Ruthman is going for the Clinton Park's complete game. Pitch to Carter. Ground ball foul first base side. We'll do it again. A ball and two strikes. Don't forget, after the game, we go through the rest of this Tuesday in baseball. We'll tell you what happened between the Red Sox and the Yankees and tell you what we're doing at noontime tomorrow. That's nine Pacific, Lorenzo. Pitch to Carter. Struck him out. That's nine for Ruthven. Actually, Ruthven should be the digital dice player in the game. Titania just whispered some sweet nothings in his ear, but it sounded like, no so frail. You know what? She, I can't tell you what she said. I know what she said. Pitch to Parrish is a ground ball to Hebner. Takes it to the bag himself, and there's two out. So a last chance saloon for Montreal. Who can hit a righty? Will it be Stan Pappy, who is at 197. No homers, and... I could have sworn he, that just... Never mind. Never mind what it said. I hit the wrong player. Gosh, diddly darn it. So 197 and 2 RBI. Ruthven needs one more out for an 8 hitter. And the second win with Philadelphia. And the 10th strikeout. How about that? Off speed on the offside corner. Ruthven pumps his fist and the Phillies win 7 to 1. So. Dick Ruthven is actually our player of the game. I lied about Maddox. Maddox will get the uh, box of Tasty Cakes, the orange flavor, nummy, nummy. So, Ruthven, nine innings, eight hits, the one run in the second, it was there, and he walked two and struck out a season-high ten, and he did it on 123 pitches. And he lowers his Philadelphia, uh, actually raises his Philadelphia ERA to 087. Dews goes to three and five, Garmin and Atkinson. Garmin had one bad inning. And Atkinson pitched well. Cromartie, by the way, two doubles for the Expos. And so the standings at the moment, Philadelphia by a game and a half over Pittsburgh. You look at me. And we'll see something with pure imagination. Rest of the day in baseball. Dennis Lamp goes to five and ten. The Cubbies beat the Mets four to one. Oh, ouch! 
St. Louis pounds out 16 hits, and they beat Pittsburgh 13 to 3. Oh, baby. That hurt. Oh, my goodness. Vukovic goes to 3 and 4. Candelaria falls to 4 and 5. Baltimore 4, Toronto 2 in the first of a twin bell. Jim Palmer wins his ninth. And the nightcap, Baltimore 11, Toronto 9. I'm assuming that's the game that the Orioles hit five home runs in. Stanhouse goes to 6 and 1. Elliot Hendricks with his first two homers of the year. So the Orioles go to 44 and 29. The Dodgers, five home runs, 17 hits. Doug Rao pounds at Atlanta like a piece of chicken parmesan, 11 to 4. Billy Russell with his first home run of the year. Tigers down the Indians, 8 to 4. Dave Roseman goes to 5 and 5. Uh, we don't read what happened in New York. Nope, the Yankees beat the Red Sox 6-2. Ron Guidry goes to 10-3. Reggie, he strikes out 12. He strikes out 12 and goes the distance. Reggie Jackson 3-4 for four with a double and a stolen base. Milwaukee in 11 beats the Twins 5-4. Cincinnati 5, Houston 3. In 11 innings, Pedro Borbone goes to 5-1 on the year. Pittsburgh in a doubleheader against St. Louis. He told you St. Louis won the opener. Pittsburgh takes a nightcap 14-8. Jerry Royce gets the win. Dave Parker with his 17th he drove in two. Baltimore and uh, Toronto, actually, I think I told you that one already. Texas has won 10 straight. Doc Ellis goes to 5-4. and four. They beat the A's 7-2. San Diego behind Gaylord Perry stuns the, Di or the Giants 8-2. California beat Kansas City 4-3 and 10. Amos Otis with two homers and a losing cause. LaRoche goes to 6-2. And, and the Mariners beat the White Sox 9-3. Dick Pohl goes to 5-5. Five five. A big win for the Reds indeed. So, standings. Well, first, what are we playing tomorrow? We're playing the Angels and the Royals. Noon Eastern, 9 Pacific from Anaheim. That's the game tomorrow. Standings as we stand at the end of play on the 27th. National League East, Phillies by a game and a half over Pittsburgh, 7 over Montreal. The West, the Dodgers by 5 and a half over Houston. I do think the Reds will catch Houston. There's still three back, though. In the East... The Yankees knocked the Red Sox down to six and a half. Baltimore, a game and a half back. Kansas City by two over California, three over Texas, four over Minnesota, and five and a half over Chicago. Thursday's game will be Cincinnati in Houston. So you'll see that one coming up. So the Royals and the Angels tomorrow, Cincy in Houston on Thursday. And there you go. We'll talk to you tonight for Dave Gardner's chat. I'm Ron Juckett. Be good to each other. It's all we have. We'll talk to you tonight about 6.30 and for baseball tomorrow at noon. Bye-bye.